In this video, guys, we look at how I set up my screens on TradingView. Stay tuned. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining me. All right, so I want to kind of run through how I set up my screens on TradingView. Now, uh, those of you who've kind of been around a while will have probably seen my screens go smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. I don't know if I did a video where I had my 10 screen system or not. Uh, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I don't know. But I went from more massive amounts of screens all the way down. I had a couple, then a couple of screens. And then I went down to this one single wide screen. And do you know, I think this is the way forward, guys. I think that there are obviously times and strategies where you need a lot of screens. You know, if you're trading a lot of instruments, you're looking at a lot of options chains, a lot of equities, you need a lot of data and you can't be faffed opening tabs, flicking around, punching up things. You need all that information there. So I get it. If that's a strategy, then that's just an operational decision you have to make. Um, but for most people who are trading, let's say one or two markets, then in the number of screens, I think that actually it's more powerful if you can reduce the noise. And I've kind of talked about this a little bit before and touched on this before, but I feel that the more noise we have, even if we don't realize it, it's actually making our decision harder. And so I'm gonna show you how I set up my screens at the moment. Listen guys, this may change month to month. You know, I like to stay fluid with the market conditions. You know, more, I might end up bringing another screen back in. I might go back to a kind of more screen system. I might even, you know, reduce, who knows? Um, I like to kind of change things out a bit. I used to be very, very stayed in the way I had my setup and structure and I had it for years. I never changed anything. The color settings were all the same, all this stuff. And then you have things come along like uh, someone updates the software or this or another platform and you end up getting so messed up by it and so uh, kind of it changes the thing completely for you um, that it almost ruins things and so um, you know I like to change things up a bit sometimes I have something on my screen sometimes I have another there's always my go-to things that I come back to um, that I want to see but ultimately you know things change so anyway I thought I'd share with you what, what I've got at the moment on, on my screen and how I've got things set up uh, for uh, trading the Dow, the ES, NASDAQ, any US index. So it's different between between what I'm trading, but at the moment, plenty of opportunity in there as I'm filming this. So it's a great trading vehicle. So I'm gonna show you what I've got on the screen. So let's hit the screens now. What I'm gonna have to do though, guys, is because of the way that I'm screen sharing, I will kind of bring in the different windows, but you can see kind of I've got the laptop over here. Um, I've, my desktop, I haven't used my desktop for a long, long time. The laptop is quite capable of running additional couple of screens if I need to. If you've got more screens, obviously you need, you need a desktop, but I haven't used my desktop for a long, long time. Um, and then I've got a couple of different windows here, but I'll drag them over so you can just see them uh, in closer detail. But ultimately I kind of split this into two windows. Um, it's slightly out of, uh, not symmet symmetrical at the moment because of the recording. I've got an additional uh, execution normally here that I'll flick between execution and a bigger chart. But this is the kind of informational window. And if you think about it, you know, this isn't particularly big screen. It's a very a nice screen, but it's not a, like, a, we're not talking a huge screen here. It almost replicates, um, almost, not quite, a kind of a quad screen system that you'd have when you had your old 19 inches. I remember actually, guys, when I first started trading, I had the beige CRTs, these heavy things on a shelf. And I remember them sitting on this makeshift shelf, having them all in a row like this, these stupid things, but that's what it was using. And then when you own a flat, screens came along you thought you're you know you thought you were a trading genius because you could have flat screens anyway let's get back to the screens and have a look and see what's uh, see what i've got all right guys so this is a screen you can see in front i have um now generally what i'll do is this um i will have a i've got a kind of watch list that i change around all the time um i have my uh, Dow stuff up here. I like to look at the SPY because I feel that that ETF is really key. Um, if I'm spread betting the Dow, then I'll use a US 30, which is like a CFD equivalent. Uh, I'll also look at the Dow Cash. Um, uh, but the SPY to me at the moment is quite a good leading indicator. So on this black screen here, which I'll bring in, I have the S&P 500 on a five minute at the top. I have it on a 15, but I will flick that between a 15 and a daily. I normally have it set on a daily, if I'm honest, so I can still see the bigger picture and understand what's going on. Uh, I'm gonna to come to these bottom things in a moment um, because they're super important for my execution. 
Right, so this is the screen when I will look at and see the object that I'm trying, the instrument that I'm trading. Uh, I'll look at a five minute. When I'm executing, I will then flick down to a one minute to see the, you know, the nuances of the trade, the nuances of the price action. But I want to flick it out as soon as possible. I've learned that really, you know, watching a one minute all the time it really doesn't doesn't serve you. I feel like it's it's a lot of noise there. You know, I'm super committed to the one minute. I've always traded off the one minute. I'll never leave the one minute. But I think looking at it at the right time is key. So what I'll end up doing, guys, is I'll go in the 15 minute normally and I will I'll kind of bracket the area we're in. I'll look at my levels, I'll draw my lines on, I'll see the kind of position, I'll look at the daily. I'll be reminded of where we are in context of things. And I can flick through, obviously look at the S&P 500, I can flick through, look at the NASDAQ, etc. So I'll, I'll do my kind of due diligence, if you like, uh, based on that. And I'll also make sure that I'm checking the cash session against a 24 hour session if I'm trading uh, the Dow. And I'm saying, okay, where are we? Okay, the Dow's not quite at the high, yes, etc. And I'll be, I'll be noting things down. Um, I have on the chart here also uh, volume. Obviously, it's not going to show for cash, but I have volume and I have uh, a range function, which is an ATR set to one period, so I can see the one minute range. Again, sometimes I have this on, sometimes I don't, but I always have it on in some form. You notice it's quite a common theme throughout a lot of the, the things on the chart here, because I like to see, you know, it's a big relative range, a low relative range. I've got a lot of data, a lot of statistics I do uh, outside of stuff, um, which I'll show you another video, uh, how I how I do that kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, this is it guys. Uh, and then I'll kind of do my due diligence. I put my brackets in, I put my lines in, put my levels in, set my alerts, etc., etc., etc. And then I can quite easily scan through and look through the currencies, see what the currencies are up to. Um, you know, see what maybe European indices are up to, see what some of the energy stuff's up to. Um, if I'm kind of half interested in Bitcoin, not traded Bitcoin for, for ages, I'll have a look there. And some of the stocks, of course, here. But these will, these will shift in and out depending on uh, what's happening. And more, more likely, guys, just, just out of interest and curiosity uh, as to what's going on. But anything that's very super useful, I want to be trading, I want to drag it up uh, towards the top. Okay, so let's now bring in this and let's go over exactly what I've got here. And by the way, on the laptop screen, I have a bigger window. Let me bring this in as well, uh, which is showing me really the same kind of stuff. But um, I will use a one minute or a five minute or whatever it may be. Just just to kind of show what's going on. And I'll have the tick index here, but we'll cross the tick index in a moment. But I'll also have my execution on that, on that screen as well. All right, so... Uh, I want to minimize this a bit so we can see everything. Let me bring it in so it's looking nice. Right, okay, so uh, why do I use black? I don't know, I've always used black. I kind of switched to white quite recently to differentiate a little bit, but hey, you're not going to become profitable with use black or white. <laughs> um, but I just like uh, pleasing, I think, to watch black. Okay, so here's our, our split into four. This is trading view specifically. And then self-explanatory on the top there is the SPY, use the SPY and uh, the daily here. Now this is the tick index. Now I talk a lot about the tick index. If you head to my uh, price action program, then you will see there is a interesting section. So here guys, we've got the tick index. Now the tick index is super critical for making a uh, good trading uh, short-term trading decisions, in my opinion. I know just yesterday, um, I kind of had a long on the Dow after this flag. It was quite late in the move, but it was Fed, etc. And just having that, you know, pushing ticks, you know, allows you to get out near the high. And the same if you're entering on on, on the other side. So I'm not going to go into it. So that's super useful to me. I have to have the ticks on there. I set alerts for plus a thousand and minus a thousand audible alerts. Another way as well of kind of being. Uh, alerted 20 volatility and down here I kind of play around with this at the moment I've got the VXX which is the VIX ETF and I've got the advanced declines um, I, I kind of half use this and half don't I like to see you know let's say we're, we're flagging yes there's a great example actually flagging at highs um, the VIX is kind of pushing to lows or the VIX ETF is pushing to lows still but we haven't broken out the advanced declines are kind of sitting at highs. You know, then we break out, we get an advanced declines pushing to highs, showing that a lot of more stocks are uh, pushing to highs. We get the VIX pushing to lows. We get a push in ticks. All the kind of things that we look at to make the decision 
uh, whether to kind of stick with the trade, whether to exit the trade, whether to add to the trade, all that kind of stuff. So that's super useful to me when I'm trading or day trading the US indices. Uh, I like to kind of have that stuff up uh, and to see what's going on. But, you know, as I say, things, uh, things change. I like to play around with different things. Sometimes I'll find that it's something's not working so much, so I'll not look at it. Something decides, you know, it's working quite a lot. So I'll bring that in. You know, maybe there's another market that's actually driving the equity market. If that's the case, I'll bring that into the chart. So I think that, you know, it's, it's a very personal thing as well. Um, I still very, very much uh, say, you know, too much is just detrimental. And you don't realize it, guys. You know, sometimes you've got all this information. You think, oh, I need that, I need that, I need that, I need that. But ultimately, it's, it's, it's bombarding your subconscious. You're getting so much cognitive load without realizing it that actually it's, it's affecting your ability to transact, affecting your ability to make a decision on the deal. So keep things as, as little as possible uh, and then kind of add them as you feel you need them without adding too much. So anyway, guys, that's my layout at the moment. Could change. If it changes, maybe I'll do an update for you. Uh, regardless of that, keep the risk managed, guys, and uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you're not already. If you're not, why not? I'm sure you are. Most people are subscribed already. Take care, guys. See you next one. Bye-bye.